All right, so in this video, we're gonna show you how to do a fault routine and the reason why you would do a fault routine, right? So let's just say you have a program and for some reason you were troubleshooting it and you got a fault. Let's just uh, indicate a fault right here. I've already made some logic. I'm pushing a, a negative one into a timer, which will create a fault in my processor. So you see that I created a, a fault in my processor. My whole system is shut down right now. Right, so effect effectively, and again, this is an active system. This is my 30 day YouTube project, servo project. So if this was a regular machine, I wanted to come in and actually look at it. Now I can't, if I go over here, I can go to go to uh, faults and see the information on it. Now I want you to note right here, it says right here, can be trapped by a fault routine. Now, why would you do that? Well, you can easily see the data right here, but let's just say for instance, you're not working 24 seven. You're not the person going to be in front of the computer 24 seven or be accessible at the point in time where the fault may occur. Again, we all have lives. We all have stuff to do. Okay. Even if I were to clear this fault again, it goes in and if I hit run again, it's going to fault out again. Why? Because I did not change my value. I'm going to change my value. So at this point and go and clear the fault, go back on and go back in run, run mode. Okay. So actually it did not accept my, um, cause I have it triggered right here. Oh, that's funny. All right. So we've got to clear fault and then we'll go to uh, run mode and it would clear the fault. All right. So now it's back running. Everything's good. But let's just say that system, that same exact process happened. Your, pro your program faulted out or your, your processor went into a fault and you didn't know why. And again, the person on night shift or something reset it, they got it back running. You just didn't know why and it kept happening, kept happening, kept happening. You need to have a fault routine. What a fault routine is gonna do is, is gonna capture the information and help you out. So how do you do that? I'm gonna show you. So real quick, you're gonna, I'm gonna do this in my main system, which is gonna be my state machine. I'm gonna come in here and add a new routine, okay? I'm gonna call this fault routine, real simple, click okay. Now in this, I'm going to come over here and go into my program level of that. I'm gonna open up properties, and instead of going into my main program, my, my main routine, right? I'm going and, and then calling a JSR to my fault routine. I'm going to then come over here to my main program right here, my main, the program that I'm, I'm in, go to configuration, go, after I go to properties, go to configurations, and then I'm going to select that routine. Now when a fault happens, that's when it will be scanned and that's when it will be used. Notice that there's a, hi, there's a highlighted symbol right here, this caution symbol, right? You see it. This is a fault ladder diagram. Okay, it's only for fault. Now, what we need to do is add some logic in here. I'm gonna do a GSV, GSV, get system value. Very simple. We're gonna do a name, okay? This is gonna be, we're gonna come down here to program. All right, then we're gonna come over here to instance. Now, you can do whatever instance of you want to. You can have a, a build routines for each. You have like one routine built in your program to monitor every one of the, every one of your programs um, in this instance. Or you can come in, um, so you can manually select what you want to here, or you can select this. If you put one of these and each one of these routines, it will do this one, right? Now, again, you would have to change your UD, your destination to a different destination, obviously, but again, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. The attribute you are looking for is major fault. Okay, major fault record. Now, as far as making the actual destination tag, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna go about doing that. We're gonna go to instruction help. And instruction help, I want you to note, okay, Right here, you're not gonna, you don't really care about the GSV instruction help. What you care about is going to the bottom and you're gonna go to C also. You're gonna go to GSV SSV objects. You're gonna come down here to program. The right here is where it's gonna tell you. You can get your major fault that happens to be a dent of an 11. Now it does tell you a tip right here. Rock, walk, ah, Rockwell Automation recommends that you create a UDT, which is a custom or user-defined data type, right? And you're gonna make that user data, the data type for the major fault record, okay? Now this user-defined data type is actually listed for you. They give you the actual uh, data that you need 
to imp and make that UDT, right? So we're gonna go ahead and make that UDT. Um, I'm, what I'm gonna do is come over here down. Now, if you don't have it open, you're gonna go to assets. You're gonna go to user define or data types, user define, create new data type. And we're gonna call this fault log. That, that simple. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over here and copy the tags that they want, right? So I can match everything up. Copy, make sure I know that it, the data type is a dent. And I'm gonna come over here and paste that in here. And I'm gonna change the data type to a dent. And I'm going to then make the rest of these. Now, to save face on this video and how fast it is, uh, just for this, the speed of it, I'm gonna go ahead and make this UDT and come back and talk about it. All right, so what we did is we came in and made our data type exactly like they, they showed make right here. So if you look side by side right here, we have our time low, which is a dent. We have our time high as a dent. Our type is an integer. Our code is an integer. Our info is a dent of an eight. So this is given the information and hexadecimal for the fault code. And this is gonna be a max time of a dent. And then our name is going to be a string. So I've went ahead and made that data type. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna come over here and get the data right so now I'm gonna actually make my tag for the GSV that we did now that we know the data we need to use behind that and we're gonna call this uh, state machine fault okay and we'll say data behind that and again this is just because it's my state machine uh, routine that I'm making it in right so now I'm gonna come in here and change my my data type right and I'm gonna change my data type to something that I just made. So I'm gonna go to uh, user defined, I'm gonna go to fault log, I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, so that's gonna pull that up. Now, in this point, you wanna come in and, and load it with a set uh, thing. You can come over here, just select any one of these, it will load all of these. So just keep that in mind, right? All right, so this is gonna come in and now we have this in here. It's not gonna be scanned. There's no data in here right now. Just keep that in mind, okay? Now we're gonna trigger that again. So now that we have our UDT in here, our fault log UDT, we have our program, have all this stuff in here. We have our fault routine in here. Let's go ahead and trigger that fault one more time. See if we can capture some data this time. All right, so now we come in here. We see now we have data. All right, so now we're gonna come over here and now we can come over here and look at our data that we have. So the info that we ha currently have, we have all our info. This would be our fault our, our fault code right here, which is fort, our, uh, 34. You can see that. So this is all in here now. So we come in here and we have all of our information that we currently need, right? Um, it didn't actually fill the name, but again, coming in, that's some, some of them do, some of them don't. But it does give you all the information that you currently need as far as that information. Now, again, you have to compare that against this right here. So if you're looking at the dent, this is a sp specific fault code. You can look at this right here and get that. All right, you can get that information to understand. So if we had a 34, you can understand where that is, right? So again, fault code, again, 34 right here, timer value, right? So how, do, how am I looking at that? I'm looking at that compared to right here. So you can see right here, my fault code. Then I could just go into instruction help and find that fault code. So now I have the information that I need. Now, here's the thing behind this. Let's walk over, let's go over here. I said walk over here. Let's go over here. Let's actually reset this and let's put this back as in the same scenario we just tested a minute ago where let's just say the person in the middle of the night cleared the fault. They got it back running again. They're they're talking to you. Hey, we need to get this thing fixed. I have this thing happening every night. Da da da. I still have data in my information here. So now, now I can come over here and easily determine where the system is, right, or where the information is. Again, verifying off of here, right. So again, the data type. The type right here is a four. So we want to look at the type. It's a four, so it's telling us it's a four right here. It's 34, okay, 34. That's telling us that we need to fix this timer preset, the accumulated value right here. 
it says also it says right here a timer instruction has a negative preset or accumulated value so the 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 actual accumulated value value could have went negative as well a lot of times that does happen because of like calculations mathematical calculations that get automatically added and updated that's a very common theme uh, that does tend to happen I just use the preset because again that's something that I can trigger and give you a sharp instance of right there's many different atmospheres of this so uh, just keep in mind that gives you that all the information that you need and uh, when it comes down to it giving you your default code it's really really powerful right so just keep in mind um, and understanding how that works right so this UDT gives you the information so again coming in here looking at this this gives the uh, fault indication of what what needs to happen you know maximum recorded value uh, your high and low timestamps uh, different things that will help you better troubleshoot and understand you know well, what's happening? Where is it at? You know, so something that you can commonly look for and give you another clue to help troubleshoot your system. Now, a lot of this stuff will give you a lot better data than what I just did um, because all I did was mainly just give another fault, right? Now, if I put in like a negative one in here, um, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, that did. That actually faulted out again as well. Let's go to my fault code. My fault code did determine that the same thing did happen. Gives me my information. Um, and then my fault uh, fault data should have updated and it did update everything's still there now it's still giving me the same thing because again I'm using the same fault um, so I'm tracking the same type of fault so I just want to show you how to do a fault routine how that actually works um, because again when it comes down to it I can clear the fault come over here get the system back running and that system is back running now why did that one reset and the other one didn't because I put a, a negative value in the accumulated value of that time or not the preset but again a lot of that works a lot of people do like presets based upon mathematic mathematical uh, calculations and stuff like that that does tend up end up uh, being an error and stuff of that nature but the cool thing about what we just did is I showed you how do you do a fault routine to capture your faults for whatever you wanted to ca capture right I actually showed you again how to tie that fault in you know coming in going in and adding that fault routine into your how it's actually scanned really um, into your system and then coming in being able to, to look at the data any given time you want to right unless you deem to clear the data now again I can come in here and clear this data right I can clear the data when I want to and like say for instance I could take this instance um, of this and just come over here and into the here and clear the data so if I want to I come over here open this up get this come over here and come over here hit this and go over add here and let's just say I want to clear all the data let's just say clear uh, fault or last fault data all right so we need to make that an actual tag and let's come over here and make that a tag and then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to a clear so we can do a move or we can do a clear I'm going to do a clear and I'm going to load this in now, paste my tag in here I'm going to clear that so you can clear all your data um, come over here and clear everything are you just your fault code if you just wanted to um, again you could you could come over here and, and do a file copy whatever you want to I'm just going to show you you know a couple things that you can actually do so if I want to clear that data come over here clear it and have that there it's not going to repopulate until a fault happens again right so now our fault data that we had we cleared our fault code you see how easy that is so now we can determine what we've if, if we were we've made a change we've reset our data if it happens again we can come back and see if we corrected the problem the, cor the right way or if we didn't correct the problem the right way so this is a very very powerful tool but keep in mind it's how you program it how you use it what is how it makes it powerful but the cool thing behind it is it does teach you and show you how to actually you know monitor a system as far as a fault in your 
processor and how do I actually go about you know utilizing that right how to go back and use that as a tool to help you better troubleshoot and better fix your 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 you know if you're in a deep problem like that you need all the tools you can get to be honest with you so having this in your tool belt is a very powerful tool hopefully that helped and we'll see you guys on the next one